Tom Hartman here with you and very pleased to have with us on the line Katrina Vanden Heuvel, the publisher and editor of The Nation magazine, the website thenation.com. You can tweet her at Katrina Nation or at The Nation. And uh, Katrina, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Tom. How are you? I am great. And you are one of the most astute political observers I know. Uh, there are very few people who I have as much or more respect for on, on this earth in terms of political observation. And Thank I'm, you. I'm curious your thoughts on what's going on right now with Rex Tillerson and, and uh, you know, being fired uh, right after uh, Sanders, Merkley, Feinstein, and Murphy were apparently uh, right, communicating right. with him. You want to tell us about this? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Tillerson's departure is not a surprise. It happened, you know, I thought it was going to happen in February. Um, I, I, you know, what we see with Pompeo, though, who's going to come in as Secretary of State and first woman head of the CIA, if she's confirmed, are two people who have condoned torture. Uh, Pompeo, as my colleague John Nichols has up on our site, thenation.com, this morning, is very much a Koch brothers uh, acolyte. He's the largest uh, uh, reci recipient of recipient, their contributions. Yeah, lifetime, I mean yeah. that that's something. And um, you know, one always wants women wants you know wants women to rise. But Gina Haspel, I mean, has a history of having overseen torture black sites in Thailand. So I think you're, and and Pompeo, not surprisingly, joins an administration which has as it possibly one, two, number two or three foreign policy priority is to tear up the Iran nuclear deal, which I believe has stabilized the region, makes our country more secure, and is a valuable treaty, uh, one of the most important foreign policy successes of the Obama administration. You know, I don't think the, you alluded, Tom, to the letter sent by Senators Feinstein, Merkley, Sanders, and Murphy on uh, March 8th uh, to Tillerson seeking a reset, restart of arms control agreements with Russia. What strikes me, I mean, and you're a great follower of the media, is we really haven't seen a peep about this in, quote, the mainstream media. It goes against the narrative. Uh, now, these four are good Democrats. I mean, they've been very much on board on the need for investigation of Russian meddling, interference, possible collusion. That's important. But I think they also understand that we're at a perilous moment in U.S.-Russian relations. And the U.S. and Russia have been at counterpoints at other times uh, in our history, but have managed to continue arms control, which is vital. Uh, you saw the Trump statement on a nuclear posture review. You saw Putin's speech of March 1. These are saber-rattling documents and speeches, but they are tit for tat almost. I mean, you can see the counter counterpoint reaction, and I think that cycle desperately needs to be broken, and the possibility of renewed arms control discussions restarted. Uh, William Perry, the Clinton Defense Secretary, no peacenik, believes we're on the abyss. I mean, it could be just miscalculation if we don't find a way forward. Mm -hmm. And that letter suggests that some senators, even while there's tough talk about Russia, understand the need to uh, have relations, that it's not pro-Putin or pro-Trump. It's common sense yeah. uh, that demands it. Yeah, amen. You mentioned the Iran deal. Uh, it seems to me that Bibi Netanyahu is basically just playing Donald Trump. Uh, and, and Netanyahu desperately, you know, he's, I mean, th this is the guy who in 2003 told us publicly, you know, said to the United States, if you guys invade Iraq, and you take down Saddam Hussein, it will generate peace in the region. And now he's telling us to, to, to bomb Iran. And I'm, I'm wondering if he's the major influence on Trump on this thing. Well, he's certainly an influence and a very, very corrosive, toxic influence. Uh, and, you know, if there was accountability in our political system, Tom, many who counseled invading Iraq as a way to stabilize the region would no longer be in our political life or on our TV screens, but such is not the case. Right. I think it's not just Netanyahu. I think it's forces in this country close to Trump and people inside the administration who have wanted to pull apart that agreement for years. And let's, you know, Trump campaigned on it partly because he's so obsessed with undoing anything Obama did, partly because he's so pathologically megalomaniac, uh, he can do better, art of the deal. But no question that there are forces in the region, such as Israel leading the way, who want to see 
Iran sidelined. Ironically, and Saudi Arabia you know too. This. And Saudi Arabia. And you know, it's Trump, it's Jared Kushner. I mean, there and it's Shelley Ad, you know, Adelson, who's allegedly mm. going to pay for the moving of the U.S. embassy to Jerusalem, which will also destabilize the region. But ironically, the Iraq War enhanced Iran's position in the region. And I think there needs to be a way to integrate um, Iran. And the other factor, as we confront the possibility of Trump talking to the leader of North Korea, possibility. And I credit the South Korean leader with persistent diplomacy and engagement despite the U.S. agenda over the last months and making something happen. I don't like the establishment mandarins who say, well, it's really dangerous if you don't have a real process before a summit. I say let's try and talk peace and not exchange bombs. Let's see where we can go. But you tear up the Iran deal, and what kind of message does that send to other countries you're trying to work with to at best denuclearize, at minimum to freeze, or to you know contain nuclear programs uh, which is critical uh, in these times. Yeah, Kim, uh, Kim would reasonably look at yeah. Trump tearing up that Iran deal and saying, well, why should I cut a similar deal with you guys when, you know, your word is no good? It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Well, well, I mean, Tom, as you know, I mean, one of the reasons someone like Kim has a nuclear program is because you look out and you see what's happened to countries, for example, Libya, which gave up its nuclear program, yep. regime change. And I credit, you know, I, I, the magazine was always seeking Bernie Sanders to say more during the presidential campaign on foreign policy. I think he gave a very good speech months after the campaign was over. But he did speak forcefully. Regime change is not a policy. It's not a strategy. It has failed us, and it makes the world more insecure and destabilizes. Yeah, and it's been failing us all the way back to the Spanish-American War, I would argue. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. One of the things that, that I think I've noticed. I, I, I haven't been a super close student of the Connor Lamb, uh, Rick Saccone race in Pennsylvania outside of just, you know, kind of the media feed. But it sure looks to me like Connor Lamb is running on the economy, on jobs, on, on the tax Absolutely. bill is stupid, rather than let's get hysterical about Russia. To what extent do you think that the Democratic Party is shooting itself in the foot by, by making this the cornerstone of so much of their policy? You know, I wrote a few months ago that I thought it was a mistake to make um, the Russia investigation the cornerstone. I think we've seen a shift. Uh, I think we've seen a shift so that the Russia investigation is, goes on in different ways. I mean, obviously, the House Intelligence Committee, I think, mistakenly was shut down by Republicans. But it goes on, but that Democrats are speaking more in key races about just what you suggested Connor Lamb is, jobs, the economy, preserving Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. These are core issues in the lives of people. I think the real malpractice the, is media malpractice, Tom, where I mm. think you turn on the cable stations, MSNBC, CNN, and Fox to a certain extent, do Russia almost to the exclusion, almost, seen a little bit of a shift, um, to, you know, stories that progressives need to tell right. about what they're achieving in these times. I think Chris Hayes, who uh, is contributing editor of The Nation, who has a show on MSNBC, you know, he tries to do the West Virginia strike. He brings on discussion about tariffs and global trade agendas, but it's not central. And I, I do think it's a mistake because we need to go into this election armed with counterpoints to Trump's con game. Yep. And his appeal to workers, which is a con and a scam. Amen. Amen. And we do need to find out what the hell happened with Russia. <laughs> you know, but, absolutely. But, but, I mean, that goes on and it should go on. Yeah, absolutely. But we also need not to treat it as warfare in my mind, but as a, we need to enhance our democracy.